here at the Zufa headquarters today with UFC CEO Lorenzo Fertitta. Thanks for taking the time. Absolutely, man. Thanks for coming. Take us back to the beginning. You and Dana White. How did that relationship start? You know, I met Dana when we both started as uh, ninth graders at Bishop Gorman High School here in Las Vegas. You know, so I, me and Dana go way back to the time we were like 14, 15 years old. Knew each other all through high school. Um, after high school, you know, kind of parted, went our own ways. I went off to college. He went off and did what he did in Boston. And we hadn't seen each other in about six or seven years until we met up again at a common friend's wedding. And uh, it was just like a nice reunion. Hey, what are you doing? Where you been? He informed me that uh, he had been training some boxers. And at the time, I was on the Nevada State Athletic Commission. So we obviously had some common interest. And he said, you know, you should come train with me. I've been training some executives. You know, I don't just deal with boxers. And I said, you know what? That's a good idea. I haven't done anything since I got out of high school. So it was time to get back in shape. Met up with him at the gym, and I think I've talked to him every day since then. You and Dana are clearly very close friends, but now that you're a decade into this business relationship, has there ever been any moments where Dana White has said something that hasn't been politically correct that's made you go, oh man, don't say that? You know, that's the beauty of what Dana is. You know, he he's, has no filter, and I think that the fans really appreciate that because we live in a day and age where, you know, you talk to a commissioner of a professional sports league, whether it be NFL or NBA or whatever and you get asked the hard questions or they get asked the hard questions and a lot of times you feel like you're getting a politically correct answer. You know, Dana is all about being saying exactly what's on his mind, being truthful. I mean, when's the last time you saw a fight promoter sit at the podium in the press conference after the fight and say, "You know what? That fight tonight sucked. I'm sorry." You know, you didn't get your money's worth. We'll make it up to you next time. You know, if it was Don King or Bob Arum, they'd be feeding you something that you know you know, just isn't right. They'd be expounding upon the fact of what a great fight it was and this and that. Dana doesn't do that. He calls it like it is, and, and that's what I think makes him so successful. Could the UFC be where it is today without Dana White? You know, certainly not with the persona that it has. I mean, Dana has, has become the face of the UFC. He is a great promoter. He's obviously a great interview. I think at the end of the day, the product is the product. I mean, people like to see, you know, two guys fight, uh, using mixed martial arts rules. So do I think that the sport would be here? Of course, it'd be here without me, it'd be here without Dana. I think the fact that we put our heads together, we put our money uh, up to build this sport, you know, he promoted it. I think those two, that two, those two combinations obviously accelerated the growth and here we are today. Do you agree with Dana that MMA will one day be the biggest sport in the whole world? I do, I really do. And I know that sounds crazy. You know, people talk about, oh, you'll never be bigger than the NFL. I mean, I would, I would say we're, we're getting, if you, if you take the whole world and, and wrap that around, I'd say we're actually getting close with our worldwide reach. I mean, we do have a special thing in that this is truly the only sport that you take to any corner of the earth, any country, people that speak any language. You, you show them, you put two guys in the octagon, let them use any martial art they want to compete. Everybody gets it. Everybody watches it. It appeals to everyone. Whereas sports that have more structured rules, it's hard to understand, whether it's cricket or, or the NFL, or baseball, it just doesn't translate if you don't grow up in that culture.